Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another fun-filled video for you today. And uh, today, I'm going to highlight one of my favorite custom knife makers. Uh, this was not originally the video that I intended to do. Uh, I actually started out trying to see if I could explain why anybody would go into customs, and I just gave up after four tries. I just thought that would be kind of a funny little story to share with you. But so today I'm just going to go ahead and highlight a particular custom knife maker. Now this gentleman, obviously he's from South Africa. Uh, the gentleman I'm talking about is John Arnold. Now this guy, uh, he's a part-time knife maker. And I really cannot re recall for the life of me what it is that he does for a living, but he is currently a part-time maker and he makes part-time knives, which is very important for you to know. Um, why is it important for you to know? Because if you are at a point in your knife collecting where you have collected uh, custom knife, I mean, if you, where you've collected production knife after production knife and you don't know where else to go next, you might want to check out this guy. Um, now, keep in mind, uh, as far as pricing of custom knives, they will range anywhere from the lowest, I'm going to say right around $385 for a low, for a low price custom, uh, custom knife. Still incredibly high quality, but, you know, a lower price custom knife. It'll range you right around $385 all the way up to, you're talking about like maybe $1,100, $1,200, even higher than that. Um, and the reason why I, I, I decided to talk about John Arnold is because his knives don't cost all that much in the world of customs, okay? Now... Your average custom piece, if you wanted to get into custom knives, for example, this one is by Andre Thorburn. This is a front flipper. Okay. This piece cost me $780 for this knife, right? Uh, it is a beautiful piece, front flipper piece. Okay. Uh, and Andre Thorburn's knives usually start right around there, and they go up and up and up in price. Now, John Arnold, a little bit more attainable, okay? If you're thinking about getting into customs, this is the perfect place to start. His knives will generally run you, from the very beginning, anywhere between, like, I'm going to say, like, 485 to maybe 550 if you wanted something a little bit better. Um... Once you reach about 550, you know you're getting something good, something really good. So, and the reason I say John Arnold's knives don't cost all that much because everything you want in a knife is is obviously it's here, including the steel. Now this, now a really good custom knife would cost you about 580, but it's not going to have M390 on it. This knife's got M390 right on the blade, uh, or the, the steel on this knife is M390. You can see I've been using the knife, so. Um, usually custom knives, South African custom knife makers anyway, they usually start out with the uh, N690 as their steel of choice. But John Arnold, uh, he'll go, you know, like right around, and, and that knife would run you about 550. For the same price, you can get an M390 piece uh, by John Arnold, and it'll cost you roughly, yeah, about 550 maybe 585 depending on the materials, you know, what other materials may be on the knife. Uh, so, again, John Arnold is a perfect place to start. Uh, and as I've said before, the reason I say that is because, like I said, this knife here cost me about 780 for this particular Andre Thorburn piece, and Andre Thorburn is a is an incredibly well known, very very popular South African knife maker. His knives will run right around seven eighty, and and good God, they're just absolutely fantastic works of art, is what he puts out. Um, really beautiful. Now, John Arnold, because he's a part time knife maker, his knives don't go up that high. Uh, or if they do go up that high, they might be something like this piece here. Uh, and I don't think I even paid 700 for this knife. I think I paid 650. And this is, you know, all Damascus blade, 
right, with the uh, marble carbon fiber in the G10. It's even got a glow-in-the-dark uh, backspacer, which you'll never see on any any other knife other than a John Arnold knife. That's pretty much his signature, is that glow-in-the-dark backspacer. Really kind of cool. Um, and the shape of his knives, you know, they have that really straight, kind of linear look. Um, and the, and his knives also, they have really good ergos, despite how they look. They have really great ergos. I don't, I never had a problem using, uh, you know, with the ergonomics on his knives. Um, but if you wanted to go into customs and you're thinking about getting a custom knife, John Arnold is a great place to start. There is a ton of variety with John Arnold knives. I mean, he, his designs go from very basic to something like this, which is a fairly basic knife, right? To something, you know, way off the charts and the price doesn't seem to get much higher however i do have to let you understand you will have to be ready to give up the cash for it but i guarantee you if you're already buying knives that cost 400 if you're already buying production pieces that that cost 400 maybe even 500 right around that way right around there and you're looking for a different experience you're looking for something completely different and i also want to mention this as well okay imagine this for the price, okay, of say five eighty to even say six twenty five, anywhere within that range, you are getting a one of a kind, handmade piece. All three of these knives are handmade and one of a kind. You will never see another one like any of these ever again. You're the only one on the planet. That would have a knife that looks like this. So, I mean, are you paying a lot of money for these pieces? Yes, you are. But you're getting something unique. You are getting something absolutely just an amazing work of art. And you're getting it all on a tool. And if you can imagine the hard work that each one of these makers goes into making one of these things, uh, that alone should make you kind of wonder, you know, I mean, it, it, it and, and even though, even though that's all appealing to you, you may still not want to be ready to pull the trigger. However, if you are ready to pull the trigger and you're looking to get into customs, check out John Arnold Knives. You can check them out on the Blade Gallery. Uh, his knives are just absolutely top-notch as far as quality, as far as um, variety. I mean, you are really getting something special in a John Arnold, in a John Arnold piece. Uh, I can't say any more than that. Um, If you're looking to get into custom knives, again, this would be a great place to start. And another thing, too, is if you want to get into customs, try not to go straight into someone like Andre Thorburn. You, you may want to work up to that because, you know, it's it's a lot to spend on, a, on one knife. I mean, I'm talking about someone that, that, and I'm speaking to someone who's never even gone into customs or still considering price as a... As a, as a reason not to go into it. Um, it's just that, in my opinion, custom knives have so much more to offer you um, if you're looking for something that's kind of fun, kind of unique to probably put in your pocket. Uh, it makes a beautiful conversation piece. I mean, there's no doubt people are going to, you know, you, you whip this out of your pocket, you know, you, people are going to wonder, where did you get that? What is that? You know, they're going to want to know what these things are, or what that is. And um, the world of customs by no means is it cheap. Um, and I think the point of this video is for me to tell you that it is, once you get to this level, it is incredibly satisfying. I mean, the money that you're shelling out for these beautiful works of art after a while, I mean, 
there really isn't any, you know, there's no feeling like it. I'm not saying you're probably not getting that from a production knife, but you're talking about one-of-a-kind handmade pieces, uh, which is not something you're going to get from Spyderco or from, uh, you know, Zero Tolerance or Kershaw. Keep in mind, those are high-end quality tools. They are completely different animal than what you're looking at here. Uh, like I said, I probably would have failed trying to explain uh, the difference between why anyone would want to go into customs versus staying into the production world. I'm pretty sure I would have failed at that. Uh, and I'm probably failing in this video too. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to talk about if you wanted to get into customs. And if anyone out there is asking me, well, Omar, is it worth the price? Is it worth getting into this, into the world of customs? Uh, my own opinion, after being a custom collector for about a year, I'm gonna have to say yes. Uh, is it addictive? You bet, it's very addictive. Uh, especially if you have a credit card. I would definitely tell you guys to kind of just Buy your knives little by little because there are people online that have gone into some serious debt. So it's going to take some serious control uh, once you reach this level. That's not to say that that doesn't happen where you are right now. However, there's a big difference between saying I'm going to spend 200 bucks for a piece and I'm rather than saying I'm going to spend 550 to 600 dollars on one knife. Uh you have to be ready to shell out the bucks. Um uh, but I guess what I'm trying to tell you is that the feeling you get from owning a custom knife uh and going down this route cannot be compared. Can I just say that? Uh, anybody out there that's into customs uh, and is, has a passion for custom knives like I've got. Um, and it's funny because that's actually the first time I've ever said that. I've never said I've actually had a passion for custom knives, but I do. I've got a, I've got a real passion for these knives. Um, it is worth it. It's worth it. If you can control yourself. Uh, like I said, I know there's guys out there that are going to spend thousands of dollars on custom knives. And then they wind up selling them all off. Well, I'm not into that. Um, my own experience, if you're going to ask me right now, uh, am I in debt? Yeah, but I'm in debt at about 2800 bucks. That's about it. Uh, I usually um buy knives and I take my time buying them or at least I try to uh because that's another thing when you get into custom knives um you're gonna want to uh I mean just once you buy your first one you're gonna just automatically go insane and buy another one guarantee because not because just having one custom knife isn't gonna be enough I mean it's gonna be the same cycle again that you had with you know, with your Spartacos and your CRKTs and your Zero Tolerances, whatever it is that you're into, the cycle will happen again. However, you bumped up a, a notch because now you're going to own knives that only, that may, that may be just one of a kind only. And they're going to be pieces, they're going to be artworks that you're probably going to want to hand off to your kids, to your grandkids. Uh, they might even stay in your family for generations. I mean, who knows? Um, but that is the real main attraction, uh, to custom knives. Uh, it's, and South Africa is a great place to start because that's pretty much where the heart of custom knife making began is in South Africa. I mean, these guys, there are tons and tons of knife makers out there that makes all sorts of interesting knives, including fixed blades, which I'm not into, um, but if you say if you're sitting there right now watching this video, okay, and you're saying to yourself, you know what, I think I bought my last benchmate. I don't know where to go. Check out John Arnold. I mean, if you're ready to step up and, and get into your first custom, this guy, for what you get, the value you get out of his knives, I mean, absolutely just top notch. I don't. I've never owned a production knife that closed like this, ever, never. I've never had a knife, a cus, you know, a a production piece 
that close that way. And I've had some nice IKBS production knives that I've owned, uh, but they didn't they didn't have the same action that I'm experiencing here. I mean, these are just phenomenal. Um, they really are. Even this little teeny tiny flipper here by John Arnold is amazing. So, yeah, I mean, definitely check it out. Check him out. Um, you can go on Instagram and talk with John Arnold. He's usually there every once in a while. Um, if you're interested in getting a custom piece, uh, that's another thing. You get to meet the makers that make the knives on Instagram. I talk to them all the time. In fact, Andre Thorburn right now, the gentleman that, uh, the gentleman that made this piece for me, uh, which is my my one and only true custom. I'm going to call it true custom. This one was actually made for me by Andre Thorburn. He is currently making me another custom piece. I'm hoping to get that probably in June. The guy's real busy. Uh, and that knife is going to pretty much be the uh, smaller version of this knife with a different piece of artwork on it. This one's got an, an American Eagle head on it. The next knife will probably have like a fish on it because I figured, you know, eagles eat fish. You know what I mean? So it'd be kind of nice to have a matching knife to go along with that one. Really can't wait to see what he does with that. Um, I'm not going to talk any more about, you know, what these knives, what the action's like on these knives. You want to, you want to, you know, hear all about each one of these knives individually. You can check out my channel. I talk about every custom that I've ever bought. Um in a very, very fiery way, so, especially this one, because this was, you know, um, my one and only true custom made by, um, Andre Thorburn, and I, I, and I loved it so much, um, that I'm going back for more, so, can't wait to get that, but in the meantime, if you're not ready to spend 700 800 dollars $1 on a custom knife, check out John Arnold, his knives are top-notch. They are every bit as good as any other custom knife maker out there. Uh, you know, he very easily can be in competition with uh, Andre Thorburn, as popular as he is. But if you want to start getting into, the, into customs, definitely check out John Arnold. Once you check John Arnold out, who knows, maybe you'll get one of these in your collection as well. So you're going to want to start soft, start out slow, check out some, uh, you know, lesser known, I think that's what I'm trying to say, check out some lesser known custom knife makers, because even their knives are incredibly top quality, just as top quality as the, as the popular ones. And they don't get as much mention. So you're going to want to look around. I mean, that's another thing, too, is, you know, when you, you're going to be on this trip alone in the world of custom knives. And I think that's one of the one of the fun things about getting into customs is that you're going to be into this world by yourself. You're not going to listen to anyone else's opinion. You know, because when we get into production knives, everybody says, oh, well, the Spartaco Swish Boy is a great knife. You got to get one. Next thing you know, you have one in your collection. You realize that they're right. In this world, because a lot of the times you're dealing with one of a kind handmade pieces, um, your opinion, you know, you'll have... The, the opinion that you have on your own life will be in your own true satisfaction. There, there's nothing, no one else can say anything else about, you know, about what you chose and why you chose that. Um, and just like in the production world, um, the sharing is going to continue. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll share with your other friends about the knives that you've collected. But, you know, what makes it much more fun is that you've got a knife in your collection and nobody else has got it's a one of a kind. I mean, that alone should be enough to make you think, are you ready for that kind of experience um, with your knife collecting? Because you are going to be getting some really, really top-notch, beautiful, beautiful works of art. So keep in mind that the people that make these tools, they see this as a canvas. And all the materials that go on the knife 
is basically their paintbrush. And they're putting in front of you basically their soul. I mean, it might sound ridiculous, but that's pretty much the truth. You get into custom knives, you're and, and there's nothing wrong with saying that you're really just buying the maker, because you are in a sense. I mean, if you like the guy's style, you know, you may get more of his knives. Um, and that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video, is if anyone out there has bought their last production piece, and they think that they feel that they've had enough... Maybe you're ready to go into this, maybe you're not. But if you're ready to pull the trigger, and think think of it this way. You could buy, say, a zero-tolerance piece if you wanted to, and you'd be very, very happy with that. And a Benchmade, and be very, very happy with that. But for the same price... Now, keep in mind, everybody else would have the same knife that you've got. I'm not using that as as a, as a base for you to start this. But think of it this way. If you shell out a little more money... <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing by telling you guys this. But if you shell out a little more money, you will be having in your pocket a knife that nobody else has got and no one else will ever have. Because it's a one-of-a-kind handmade piece. I mean... It's just the way you see. You see it. Um, I think I'm going to wrap this video up now by saying that uh, my experience in buying these knives, yeah, they're incredibly expensive. And yeah, maybe to the average person it might seem a little bit ridiculous that I spend this much money for a tool. Uh, but see, I don't see these as tools. I see these as works of art. <laughs> when you get into this level, you get to this level... Um, you kind of have to really begin to realize that that's what you're buying. You're buying a work of art not only in looks, but you're buying a work of art in mechanics. You're buying a work of art in the materials that went into making the piece. You're buying a work of art in the way the materials were put together in such a way that it looks appealing to the eye. That's what you're buying. So this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy, and I hope I've um, given you some insight to the world of customs. Maybe I was just blabbering on and on. Maybe I'm just a crazy guy who's got a passion for pointy things. Who the hell knows? But again, you know, if you want to get into customs, uh, again, you could check out John Arnold. Or shop around and check out some of the lower quality South African knife makers. Uh, they've got a lot to offer in a low-end low end custom knife. I mean, here's one. Uh, this one is by um, uh, J.D. Van Deventer. This is one of his front flippers. It's only about three eighty five. dollars I think I paid for this piece. Um, it's a frame lock. You know, beautiful, beautiful knife. So anyway, check out the, you know, if you, you know, if you happen to be, you know, in the market or you're getting a little bit hungry for something different or maybe you bought your last bench made, you don't know where you are in your hobby. I know what that's like. It's going to happen. It happened to me eventually. You know, I'm just saying, you know, one of kind handmade versus a production knife that, you know, it's, it's all in the way you see it. All in the way you see it. There's, and again, I'm not putting down production knives because there are some fantastic production pieces out there made by Spartaco, Zero Tolerance, and uh, Benchmade, and CRKT. They put out great stuff. Great stuff. But if you're looking for something more in a tool, maybe this is where you need to start your collection at from, you know, again. Um... It's up to you. I mean, I, I went down this route, and I've never gone back. So, I'm not a moony or anything, but, you know, it, again, I know the feeling. If you get to the point where, you know, you want to jump into something a little bit more higher end, you know, you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. 
I own 30 customs, or 30 customs, 20 customs. I'm, I'm thinking I'd love to have 30. I own 20 customs, and there isn't one knife in my collection that I absolutely don't love. Um, I love all my pieces, and I can guarantee this much. I'm not going to be selling any of these. None. They're going to stay in the collection forever. Um, more than likely... Uh, one good thing will probably come out of it. I'll probably wind up stopping uh, at some point, you know, so, but not yet. <laughs> so anyway, this is Omar the Knife Shark guy signing off, uh, hoping that I haven't blabbed on long enough. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video into the insight look into buying custom knives or at least discussing the thought of possibly buying your first custom piece. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Uh, I'm not an expert in knives. All I can tell you is the experience of going this route. I think I can say I'm pretty much an expert in being an experienced in going this route as far as having the angst and the uncomfortableness you may feel when you go down this way. Uh, believe me, we've all been through it. We know what it's like. Um, good luck to you guys. And I'm hoping, this is Omar, the Knife Shark guy, hoping you'll find one of these guys, one of these three pieces of sharp art in your collection. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.